three. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. So if these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they're going to have to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. On second down, here's Taylor. That's complete. It's Gordon. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. Over the middle, complete. That's Gordon. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. On first down, it's Taylor. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets it down to the 32. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. We pick up another first down with that run. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. They were searching for the tight end, Darren Fells. And now it's second down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. I think Cameron Hayward's ability to take on blocks, hold the point of attack, and get upfield serves him very, very well. What a nice play there. Yeah, he can take on blocks because he's built like a block. Third and long, it's Taylor. And that is incomplete. T.J. Watt, first-round pick a year ago there defensively for Pittsburgh. When everything is in sync on defense, that means everyone's communicating really well, and sometimes it's nonverbal. They just know that when a receiver is in one spot, this person may have him, and he's in another spot, the next defender may have him. And they've squeezed the passing lanes down to where it's so difficult to find an open area to deliver the football. They've made it tough on them all game long. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there, second down. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> the reception good for seven. It's third down. 
that was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually up to about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Well, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there. Need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and these creases like they were able to exploit right there. On third down, here's Bell. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. We are through three quarters here on NFL Kickoff Weekend. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the 